Today at our 2010 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, we're going to be taking a look at showing you how to install the Draw Tight I Command Proportional Trailer Brake Controller, part number 5535. To get that installed, we're going to be using the wiring kit for 2, 4, 6, and 8 brake electric trailer brake controllers, part number 5506. That will be for an existing 7 pole. If you do not have an existing 7 pole, you're going to want to pick up part number ETBC7. This is what our brake controller looks like when it's installed. This is going to be a proportional brake controller. What that means is, when you apply the brakes in your Jeep, the same amount of force is going to be applied to the brakes on your trailer. This button here, that you're going to have a plus and minus button. These two gray triangles. Those are going to be your gain. What the gain is used for is that's going to allow you to fine tune how much power is going to your brakes on your trailer. These two buttons over here are going to be your boost. So the higher the boost, the quicker you're going to get to that maximum intensity and brake pressure on your trailer. This button here is going to be your manual override. What that's used for is for emergency situations when you want to apply the brakes on your trailer and not in your vehicle. Now our customer already has a 7-way installed, so we're going to go ahead and loosen up those wires, pull them down so you have access to them. You're going to get a, a bundle of wire in your kit. Inside of this, you're going to have a black and a white wire. We're going to have to separate them two. This is a wire that's going to run to the front, connect to the battery. You can just use a knife. You just want to split these two apart enough where you can strip the ends. So we're only going to be using three of these wires. Our white is going to be our ground. This is going to be our brakes. This is going to be our power that's running to our battery. Yellow wire would be for reverse. We're not going to be using that on this installation. Now, your existing seven pole, if you have it, is going to come with buck connectors on it. We're going to cut those off and use heat shrink because it's going to be outside the vehicle. It's going to help protect the connections a little bit better. Now these heat shrink buck connectors do not come with your kit, but you can find them on our website. And we're going to take our black and white wire. We're going to strip them. Our black wire is going to go to our black wire, and our white wire is going to be connected to our blue wire, which is going to run to our brake controller. I'm going to take some electrical tape, go ahead and cover this yellow wire. I'm going to tape it to the wire loom that's already on there. Next, we'll take a heat gun and go ahead and shrink down our buck connectors. Once you've got those shrunk down, we'll wrap them up with some electrical tape to protect them, along with all of our other connections we have here. Next, we'll attach our ground wire. You want to make sure it's on metal, not on any plastic. We use a self-tapping screw. Now we want to make sure our wiring is going to stay off our muffler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some long zip ties. I'm going to zip tie right around the hitch. I'm going to show you how I ran my wire. You can do it however you want. Driver's side has exhaust, so you want to stay away from the heat. Plus, the battery is on the passenger side in the engine compartment. So what I did is I went up above here and I took some airline tube and I ran it inside the frame. It came out, zip tied it to this existing factory wiring. Dropped an airline tube down from my battery. Taped my wire to my airline tube. And now I'll go up and I'll be able to pull it straight up to where my battery's sitting. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 40 amp circuit breaker. We need to find a good place to mount it. I found right on the inside right here is probably a good place to put it. Then we can take our circuit breaker.
Next thing we need to do is we need to strip back our coating off of our two wires. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our white wire, which again is coming from our blue wire on our seven pole. It's gonna be going to our brake controller. We're gonna route that over to the driver's side. We're just gonna lay it over there for now. And then our black wire, we're gonna to connect to the silver side. We'll cut off extra, go from our copper side to our battery. And we'll cut that off. We're gonna add a small ring terminal to one side, large ring terminal on the other. We're gonna add our small ring terminal to our copper post. Once you've got that one mounted from your seven pole, you're gonna take your 20 amp circuit breaker and we can mount this one right next to it, which is gonna be giving power to our brake controller. Next, we'll take our extra black wire. And again, we're gonna do the same connection we did here. We're gonna give ourselves enough to connect to our positive side of our battery. Large ring terminal, small ring terminal. And we're gonna add this jumper to the copper side. Take our 3 8 wrench and tighten down our nuts holding our wires on. The black wire that I connected to my second circuit breaker, my 20 amp, I've run across the front with my white wire coming from my seven pole in the back. Now I've zip tied it along this existing wiring Next thing we need to do is we need to route it inside to the driver's side compartment to where we can connect it to our brake controller. Next to your brake booster here, there is actually a grommet that you can run through. You notice inside of this metal piece, right in the center of it, it's pretty soft. So if you take your airline hose, just cut a point into it, you'll be able to push it right through, or you can use a knife and just cut a little slit in it. Next, I'll tape one of my wires onto my airline tube like this. I'm gonna tape right behind my airline tube to the other wire. And we can go inside and pull both our wires through. Next thing we need to do is we need to find a good place to mount our brake controller. It's not so high that it's gonna interfere with the driver's knee and it's not so low that it's gonna inter interfere with the driver's foot. Once we've determined where we want it, we'll take one of our self-tapping screws that comes in our kit and put one in. Next, we're gonna line up our holes on the side of our bracket with the holes in our brake controller. And again, we'll take a couple of our self-tapping screws that come in our kit. I'll we'll take a quarter inch socket on this side. We'll tighten this one up. Next, we're gonna take our wire adapter. We'll go ahead and make the connection. So now I'll add the butt connector to my blue wire. And then one to my black wire. And what I need to do is my wire that came from my engine compartment, my black and white one, I'm gonna need to cut them down to size. So we'll cut them about right in this area. We'll strip each one back. And we're gonna add our blue to our white. And we'll connect our black wire to our black. And again, our white is going to ground somewhere on the body. Red wire is going to go to our brake light switch on our brake pedal. So next we're going to add a ring terminal to our white wire coming from our brake controller. We need to find a good place to ground it. And if you pull this panel off right here on the bottom, this tab that comes off it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ground it straight up from the bottom through that tab. 
Next thing we need to do is we need to determine the cold side of our brake light switch, which is gonna be connecting our red wire to. So, if you follow your brake arm up, this is gonna be your brake light switch. And you'll see some wires coming off. You'll need to test to figure out which one it was. We determined after testing that this white wire with this brownish color stripe is gonna be our wire that we're gonna be connecting to. The red wire was long enough to get over to our brake light switch. However, it was a little bit tight and I didn't wanna put any pressure on the switch itself. I just cut a little piece and extended my wire. It just makes it a little bit easier. I can always zip tie any extra up behind the dash where you're not gonna see it. So what I did is I took my brake light switch wire, cut it in half, added a buck connector on the switch side. On the other side, I took my red wire, connected it with the other side of the wire that I cut, tied them together, and then put it in the other end of the buck connector. Once you have all your connections made, you can go ahead and clean up your install. I'm gonna take my zip ties. I'm gonna feed them right up behind this plastic piece here, just like this. I'm gonna take some electrical tape. I'm gonna wrap it around my colored wire. Just kind of help it blend in with the color of the panels. And we'll just take the rest of our wiring. Just kind of bundle it up. Get our zip ties wrapped around it. Get to where it's held up there. Next thing we need to do is we need to go back outside under our hood. We're gonna connect our two power wires to the positive side of our battery. Once you have all your connections made, the last thing to do is test it out, make sure everything's working properly. You can see we've already connected it and it's showing connection. As you can see, we're getting the proper power to our brakes on our trailer, as well as all of our other functions. And that'll do it for a look at an installation on the DrawTight iCommand Proportional Trailer Brake Controller, part number 5535, on our 2010 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.